So far, we have covered the phase plane analysis of uh, analyzing nonlinear systems. In the phase plane analysis, what we were doing is we were simply plotting uh, x1 versus x2. Since our focus in phase plane remains restricted to second order differential equations, uh, so we have only two state variables and of getting the plot of x1 versus x2 or we can say x versus x dot is what a play phase plane is and we have three uh, we have studied three different methods of uh, plotting this response of obtaining this response one is an analytical approach wherein we find the solution of x1 dot and x2 dot obtain x1 and x2 and then plot x1 versus x2 uh, that also we have done actually using two different approaches. Second, uh, we study the method of isoclines, wherein we find out we uh, substitute dx2 by dx1 equal to uh, m, m being the slope of the tangent to the trajectory, uh, tangent to the phase trajectory. So from that response, from the tangents we can then obtain the actual trajectory of the system and the delta method in which we were uh, using a small incremental change uh, to find out the values of uh, so satisfying a certain type of equation that helps us plot x1 versus x2 again uh, and we also seen how in a phase plane uh, different responses behave uh, <coughs> we have seen for an uh, undamped system we have seen for a critically damped system we have seen for an over damped system so all these cases wherein we saw for a real negative distinct root uh, the equilibrium point is known as a node and if all the trajectories are converging towards the original point then it is a stable node for real positive distinct roots it's uh, an unstable node for roots being on the j omega axis you will obtain a circle uh, on in the phase plane and this represents a vortex this equilibrium point is known as vortex this corresponds to a marginally stable system and undamped response. Uh, case 4 is that of a uh, pair of complex roots in the left half of S plane. That's an underdamped response, stable system, and therefore it is it is this point is known as focus, and since it is stable, it will be called a stable focus. Similarly, you have an unstable focus, and then a pair of uh, having two real but oppositely signed roots uh, is referred to as a saddle point. Uh, so this is actually an unstable response this is uh, you if you have any root in the right half of the s plane the system response is unstable so depending upon the phase portrait you obtain for different systems you can uh, decide whether the system is stable you can uh, see where what type of response this system will be exhibiting and all of that and also we have talked about limit cycles we'll be talking limit cycles uh, in more details later on limit cycle for a limit cycle in a phase plane as we have seen with the van der Poel's oscillator uh, if you have a closed trajectory anywhere in the phase plane and all the trajectories are uh, ap approaching this phase trajectory and then remain in that closed path this system is exhibiting the property of limit cycle so we need to distinguish between limit cycle and undamped system uh, yes uh, limit cycle and, and undamped system uh, so both uh, there will be closed trajectories on the phase plane in both cases but with limit cycle it uh, it's an unposed system and there's only one trajectory an isolated trajectory that will be uh, in the phase portrait with an undamped system for different initial conditions you will have different closed paths so you need to keep that thing also in mind now we'll be starting with the describing function method and before taking up the up now theory uh, we'll start with the describing function first
So as far as the describing function goes, we have studied for linear system the transfer function and transfer function we have defined as the ratio of the output of the system to the to the input of the system and ratio of the Laplace transform of the output to the Laplace transform of the input with initial conditions being zero. So there, there in transfer function we are talking about the Laplace transform of a system. Similarly for a pulse transfer function we are defined the ratio of the Z transform of the output, the Z transform of the input with all initial conditions set to zero. Now similarly on similar lines describing function method also makes use of transform calculus and the third, tra uh, the third transform uh, methodology that you have actually studied is the Fourier transform. So describing function uh, makes use of the Fourier transform. So it will be a ratio and with Fourier transform uh, you have already seen that you can do the harmonic analysis and therefore you can obtain through Fourier transform the fundamental component different harmonic components of the system. So uh, now as far as the describing function goes uh, how will this fit into our system? Uh, we may have a system So you have a system and you are trying to control a linear system and uh, you can use different controllers for controlling the behavior of this linear system. There may be a case where you might be using a PI controller and PI with a saturation. So this means there is a nonlinear element present in this system that you have not actually accounted for, you have not taken its behavior into consideration. You are using a PI with a saturation, but you are not, you are just only concerned with the PI. You are not actually concerned with the saturation effect of the system that it will actually have on the system. And uh, you are, therefore your transient and your steady state, uh, your transient characteristics of the system may not be as expected because you have not taken into consideration the non-linearity in the system. Uh, now, when we have such a system, such a block diagram, we cannot now make use of phase plane analysis for analyzing this whole system. There is a small non-linear element. We need to have its mathematical form. We need to have its form that is actually uh, in line with the linear systems, uh, with, with the mathematical model of the linear system. Our mathematical model of the linear system if it is GS, it's a Laplace, it's a frequency domain approach. We need to have a frequency based mathematical model of the nonlinear element as well. So this is where the describing function method uh, comes into play. And uh, that describing function helps us in, uh, it is a frequency based response again and will help us in uh, in these cases where we have to uh, where we have a linear system in frequency domain we can club it with the frequency mathematical model of the non-linear element as well so that we have an exact accurate model accurate mathematical model of the complete system and we can an analyze then the system for its various behaviors so what is the describing function first of all? So describing function of a nonlinear system uh, so for, uh, of, an, uh, of any nonlinear system can be defined as it is represented by n generally 
equal to again it's a ratio and it's a ratio of uh, y1 angle phi1 divided by x so what are these these are it is the ratio of the fundamental component the fundamental component of output of the nonlinear element divided by the sinusoidal input this nonlinear system or you can say nonlinear element actually fine so the describing function is defined as the ratio of the fundamental component of the nonlinear element uh, divided by the sinusoidal input to this element it's again the ratio of the output to the input but the output is not the ex uh, exact output of the system we are only talking about the fundamental component of that output and uh, in this case particularly the input is not a step function or a ramp function the input is always a sinusoidal input that will be feeding to the system so uh, as far as y1 is therefore goes y1 uh, will refer to the amplitude a fundamental component uh y1 is the phase angle of y1 and x is the uh, sinusoidal input you can can I have a sinusoidal input uh, whose magnitude is capital X defined by x t equal to x sine of omega t so for uh, um, this type of system uh, for this type of input the nonlinear element what will be the fundamental component of the output that is what a uh, uh, system that's what we, we are looking at that means actually this is your nonlinear element you can consider this as a phase control rectifier or uh, an inverter anything we are applying a sinusoidal to input to it you obtain the output and output will not have only the fundamental components it will also be consisting of the harmonic components type of analysis you may have already done in some cases wherein you have found out the harmonic spectrum of uh, any power electronic converter there you have obtained the fundamental component as well as you were knowing the input of the system uh, so what we have here is when we apply a sinusoidal input to this nonlinear element we will get an output consisting of the fundamental component and all the harmonics so for this system for this system m that is the describing function is defined by y1 angle phi1 divided by x so we will not be taking into consideration uh, the 
uh, will not be taking into consideration other harmonic components we are only talking about the fundamental components and how we do this is by uh, the output is basically expressed as the Fourier series expansion so you have to make use now of the Fourier transform for a system to obtain it is fundamental behavior now uh, the question will be uh, we need to answer certain questions we need to say find out the describing functions of a number of systems so uh, at the start we discussed uh, different commonly occurring nonlinearities in nature like the saturation the dead zone the relay extra so we'll be finding out the describing function of all those systems to so how to actually find the describing function for these uh, nonlinear elements and even if they are they now we'll be also covering up hard nonlinearities that are not actually uh, lin linearizable like saturation on off relay backlash these are not uh, linearizable systems they are hard nonlinearities so we are finding we are going to find out describing function for these systems as well so that they are uh, so once we have these responses in the frequency domain they are comparable with the uh, frequency mathematical model of uh, a linear system we can therefore analyze the behavior of these hard nonlinearities as well so we'll be able to analyze the stability of these nonlinear systems and uh, simply by extending the Nyquist stability criterion uh, that we have already studied for the linear systems so the describing function method actually also is an extension to the nikus criterion to of the linear system to the non-linear system so uh, this is what we'll be doing so while designing this describing function method but uh, there are some assumptions that you have to take care of uh, one we have already discussed that the input of the non-linear element will always be sinusoidal signal that is only uh, the funda and only the fundamental component of the output will therefore contribute to the system response one input is sinusoidal We are taking the input sinusoidal so that only the fundamental component of uh, fundamental component of output uh, contributes to the system response. We are actually assuming this. We are no, uh, assuming that the harmonic components are all zero. Now, this is a valid statement because uh, most of the control systems naturally have most of the linear control system naturally have uh, the exhibit the linear uh, exhibit low pass filter characteristics. So, our non-linear system is not actually. Uh, alone in this system there is a linear element also in the system so most often you will have a nonlinear system followed up by a linear system that linear system has low pass filter characteristics so all the higher order harmonics so the higher order frequency components that are actually the harmonic components they will be eliminated in the system so this is one assumption that we are going to take into consideration to we will be assuming that non-linearity in the system is small and uh, uh, therefore the harmonic the amplitude of harmonic components will also be smaller fine no so that amplitude of harmonics is also small and third no time varying characteristics uh, 
uh, will be de- will be included so these are some of the assumptions that will be taken into consideration so we have the fourier transform now uh, also with respect to the fourier transform you have already studied uh, some things i am just going to be uh so when we are talking about fourier transform y of omega t we have a not plus uh, n is equal to 1 to infinity a n cos of n omega cos of n omega t plus uh, b n sin of n omega t point uh, or you can also say this is a not plus uh, uh, y of n sin of n omega t plus phi n y n is under root of a n square plus b n square and phi n is tan inverse of mm, tan inverse of uh, a n divided by b n so as far as a n goes uh, uh, it is defined as 2 by t uh, rather you can say 1 by pi 0 to Two pi f t cos of n omega t uh, d omega t b n is one by two pi zero to two pi f t sine of n omega t d omega t. Just recapping the. Uh, for a transform and a not uh, is one by two uh, pi zero to two pi f t d omega t. Uh, then you also know if f t is an odd function uh, for uh, f t meaning an odd function means. Um, So these will actually help us. We will see when we'll be finding out the non, the describing function of those non-linear systems. We'll be first of all finding out whether this is a even function or an odd function. You actually know all this thing. Uh, if f t is an odd function, that means actually f of t is f of minus t is equal to minus f of t. Uh, then in such cases, uh, the b n is eliminated. If f t is an even function. Uh, b n is zero for f t equal to even function and f of minus t is equal to f of t like for example you have cos of minus t equal to cos t uh, is an even function sin of minus t is equal to minus sin t is an odd function uh, then in that case mm, uh, Uh, a not and a n will be zero in this case. In this case, b n will be zero. So, for an even function, you can also check whether this system will be having half wave and quarter wave symmetry, and uh, accordingly, we can decide for. A not and A n. So this is about the describing function. Describing function is simply the ratio of the fundamental component of the output of the nonlinear element uh, to the uh, sinusoidal input to the nonlinear element, and it's obtained using Fourier transform. Uh, 
with certain assumptions keeping in uh, we have to t- keep certain assumptions uh, while like we do with linear systems for transform function we say that with initial condition set to zero that's an assumption here also we have some initial assumptions and those assumptions where the input being sinusoidal and uh, the nonlinearity being small in nature and no time varying characteristics being included in the nonlinear element so we now have to start with the describing function of uh, some commonly working nonlinear systems uh, we'll start that in the next session